Right, good morning, folks. Here I am. I've got the wrong hat on. A uh, disaster. That's better. Good morning, folks. You find me here at Comrie today. We've, we've come over west where it is now quarter to ten and I've taken advantage of the situation and I've sneaked out of my mum's house and I'm going to go have a quick road trip around the area. Quick spizz road trip. Thank you. Here we go. Folks, I've actually parked the car way back there and I'm on the walk now to go and find Crocodile Rock. But also, just before we get to Crocodile Rock, we have another, a young pretender to the throne of most famous rock in the area. Here is Toad Stone. Well, here he is. I don't know if the same guy who does this Crocodile Rock does this. I don't know, but it's in a similar sort of style. So about a 10 minute walk away from Frogstone, we come over the gate there and we're into this field where we have this landmark that's been here for ages and ages and ever since I was a little boy I can remember this being here. It's called Crocodile Rock and uh, it's right there behind me. There it is. Let's go have a look at it. Now I'm on top of this old bridge that goes over the old St. Philan's to Creef Railway. Oh, I'm out of puff, crikey. Right, we're not too far from the, the Crocodile Rock now. Well, there it is, Malte Trepidatione. It's looking a little bit frosted today. There he is. So for years, folks, this has been painted by a chap called Lex Gracia. Nobody knows who he is. It's a mystery. Nobody's ever seen him paint it. Again, the mystery deepens. Why does he do it? So there we go, folks. Look at that. Fantastic. And it's, it's been seen here for years. The train used to come by here and uh, it was noticed then. So I reckon the chap who paints it must be a descendant of the original LG. The initials are still on the stone, but it is a chap called Lex Gracia who does it at the moment. So there we go, folks. Crocodile Rock. I remember when a rock was young, me and Rosie had so much fun. We are way the back of the, the crocodile, the tail almost. Goes all the way. Look at the view. And here I am on the head of the crocodile. Uh, it's a bit precarious here. There we go. What a view as well. Fantastic situation. So the train would have come hurtling past here and everybody would be, uh, everybody, so cold. Everybody would have been able to see the crocodile rock.
goodness me, folks, it is so cold. Girl, bloody that 10 minute walk there. My nose has gone numb. Right, we're heading off now on the way back towards Comrie. We're going to stop off at the Tully Banneker Stones. Oh, yes. And they've got a bit of an interesting story as well. Right, just before we go to the stones, though, I've sneaked into the woods down here to have a look at this uh, old iron bridge that sits over the river here. Now, this is one of these old iron bridges that has been here for ages and ages, hidden away. Ooh. Again, it's part of the um, St. Fulins to Comrie line. There it is, coming to view now. So this really does feel like something from our bygone age with all the steel girders and the, the crisscross bits and the old rivets and things. It's very warlike, you know, it's like something you'd see in a, a German war film with the, the panzers blitzkrieging across here. Yeah, it's awesome. What a setting is, the dark forest over there, the snowy bridge, it really would make a good scene for a war reenactment or something. Fantastic. Love it. There it is. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, I've been told that I say folks too much in my videos by a professional video and photographer. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next stop here is at the Tully Banneker Stones. This is a bit of folklore rather than anything else. Legend, folklore, myth, local myth we would have at these stones uh, behind me. Let's go and touch them. So the Tully Banneker stones right behind me. And the local legend says, I remember my dad telling me this, and I remember a couple other folk as well in the village telling me that these stones can actually foretell when an earthquake is about to come. There's a famous earthquake house just further on up there at Dalhonzi in uh, Comrie, but these stones seemingly vibrate when an earthquake is about to happen as well. You have to be here when it happens, so I don't know how they've managed to uh, how to get this local myth, unless somebody was actually standing here when an earthquake happened and they felt the stones vibrate. But similarly it does foretell or forebode of coming disaster, folks. So there we go, that's the tiny Banneker stones. Now there's only two of them. However, I'm sure there's a third one somewhere lurking in this field. I'm sure you get three, because this is framing either a hill behind me or the hills over that way. And normally these stones kind of frame something. So there's not much really to see that way, I would think possibly that way behind me is the better view because if you look over that way yes it looks right down the the valley of something there so possible right let's go and see if we can find a third stone I'm sure there's a third stone but this stone here this one is by far the most interesting because it's got a couple of indentations going all the way down and it's got a very very flat surface here really 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 very smooth indeed <laughs> very smooth indeed as you can see look it goes all the way down very smooth as compared to that one over there which is just very well stone like I mean it's kind of it looks like it's tried to be actually that looks more like a seat doesn't it that let's see if we there. can get a, 
a sit down. Yeah, it's like a seat actually, it was quite comfortable. Maybe it's some sort of throne or some sort of righteous throne, a right, a right would have occurred here. Maybe somebody was tied to it, sacrificed. Or maybe somebody was forced to sit here and if they felt any vibration, then that would be the sign of the, the, uh, the earthquake coming. So you just never know. It's very comfortable, actually. Yeah, I could quite happily sit here with my flask and a sandwich and a, my laptop out here with the Wi-Fi. Oh, maybe not. Well, just check this view out. Look at this. Right there is something. Right. Ooh, so this could be it, folks. This could be the third stone. Definitely something under here. And it is in line with the two main stones. Looks like something's definitely fallen over here. Although the only thing is, though, look, that doesn't look like standing stone material to me folks so I don't know so could that be the third lost stone of Talibanica it could have be under there I don't know there's definitely some sort of stone shaped thing there but there's lots of like modern lumps of stone in there which you wouldn't see on a standing stone unless it is lying there and that's been tipped on top of it later on I don't know but yeah sure looks like there has been signs of a stone there so that could be the the third lost stone of Talibanica Anyway, there we go. We'll leave it for just now, folks. The mystery still remains. Thank you. Now, mystery object of the day. What on earth is this? It goes into the ground. It's made of fiberglass. Goodness knows what that is. What's inside that? So, does anybody know what that is? Thank you very much. Uh, hang on.